Hi guys, it's Stock Curry. I have just spent the last eight hours watching YouTube videos, and now I'm gonna consolidate everything I just learned into about a 20 minute video. We've got a lot of things to cover, so we're gonna get straight into it. Now, I did wanna let you guys know that I'm adding something new to this channel. I'm going to be adding stop loss prices to my price targets. So from now on, we'll have a buy under price. That's a good price to buy the stock at. An ideal buy-in price, that's a great price to buy the stock at. A stop loss price, that's the price that you wanna sell the stop for a loss at. And a price target, that's the price that you wanna sell the stock for a profit at. So we're gonna give you those four price targets. Now, I have not had time to go through and do that on every single stock that we're covering today. Over time, I will get there. So just be patient. It takes a lot of time to figure out and set these price targets. Like I said, I've spent the last eight hours getting as many as I could for you today, but obviously I don't have all of the stocks that we're gonna talk about today with price targets, but we do have quite a few. So be patient, we'll get there. I'm gonna get as many for you as I can. Man, it is freezing outside. We are not supposed to get above freezing until Friday. I, we have a week of this cold weather. I don't know what it's like where you're at, but it is really cold here. Anyway, let's get into today's video because we got a lot to cover, a lot of stock picks to go over for you guys. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Stock Curry. I used to work as an analyst for large investment banks, and now I analyze stock picks from the top 10 YouTubers. I s compile all of my analysis into a daily video that I post right here on this channel. All you have to do is watch one video each day and you will get every single stock pick from the top 10 YouTubers. I literally spend hours every single day watching YouTube videos so that you don't have to. And all I ask in return is that you hit that like button, subscribe and click the bell icon so that you can get notified when I release my next video. In fact, I'll give you five seconds to do that right now. All right, before we get into today's stock picks, I just want to remind everyone that I am not a financial advisor and none of the YouTubers I follow are financial advisors either. Today's video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who are wondering, I use the Webull desktop app in all of my videos, and it's also the app that I use for all of my trading. All right, let's get into today's stock picks. First up is Apple, AAPL. Larry Jones listed AAPL as one of four stocks to buy and hold long-term to turn $5 a day into a million dollars. Next up is ABML. This is American Battery Metals Corporation. They're a lithium battery recycler. Stockmo thinks ABML will continue to go up as they get their factory built and up and running. This is a long-term hold for Stockmo and remains one of its favorite penny stocks. It's been in consolidation over the last three weeks. But technically, you can see a bull flag pattern forming. And it's out of room. So this might ignore that and continue going flat, or it could break out to the upside again. Either way, I like ABML at its current price. I'll go ahead and give a buy under price of $4, an ideal buy in price of $3.75, and a stop loss price of $3.50. Now I'm not going to give you a price target, it's just too hard to say because this is a very early stage company. I would just hold this long term and hope you 10x your money over the next few years, which I think is possible. Next up is ARKK. This is ARK Investments Innovation ETF. Larry Jones listed ARKK as one of four stocks to buy and hold long term to turn $5 a day into a million dollars. Next up is AYRO. Aero. This is an American commercial EV manufacturer and a competitor to Workhorse. The CEO of AYRO responded to Dead Inside's questions, and Dead Inside posted a video with his responses on Friday. Unlike Workhorse that is focused on larger delivery vehicles for companies like USPS and Amazon, AYRO is focused on smaller delivery vehicles for restaurants. They believe they can significantly reduce a restaurant's delivery cost and eliminate the 30% fee they have to pay to DoorDash and others by providing cheap electric delivery vehicles. 
They also provide electric food trucks for universities. The CEO did say that they have no near-term plans to raise more cash, which is a good sign because their balance sheet is already healthy and they do not need more cash. They are already the clear leader in low-speed electric vehicles used on many universities and they are growing in the restaurant and neighborhood delivery markets. Dead Inside also covered a lot more in his video, so I encourage you to watch Dead Inside's video that he posted Friday. So when should you buy? Well, if you look at the weekly chart, you can see AYRO slowly start to rebound. It does tend to pull back after each large weekly gain though, so I think you would be able to buy AYRO closer to $7 or $8. Therefore, I'm going to put a buy under price in AYRO of $8 and an ideal buy in price of $7. As far as a price target, I think somewhere around $23 would be reasonable. Just keep in mind that this is a long-term two-year price target. Next up is BNGO, Bio Nano Genomics. My financial friend listed BNGO as one of his top five biotech stocks to buy now. My financial friend also let us know about some news that came out last week that BNGO's CEO is presenting at a fireside chat on Thursday, February 18th. He also mentioned a rumor that ARK Invest was buying BNGO on Friday, but I checked lucidtracking.com today and that does not seem to be true. By the way, if you want to see what ARK Invest is buying or selling, I have a link to lucidtracking.com in the description under resources. So ARK Invest isn't buying. The question now is why was BNGO up 17% on Friday? Well, there's no news to explain Friday's price action. It may have just been the rumors that turned out not to be true. Now, taking a look at the technicals, we do see a W pattern, which is bullish. This could also form a cup with a handle coming, which would also be bullish. You can also see it breaking out of the consolidation that it was in over the past few weeks, which is also bullish. So no matter how you analyze it, Friday's price action was bullish. While I still like BNGO for a long-term investment, BNGO remains too volatile for me to give any sort of buy under price or ideal buy in price. So you'll have to do your own due diligence to determine whether or not to buy and when to buy. I will tell you that Ken and Grace let us know that the average analyzed price target on BNGO is $18. Next up is CCIV. This is a SPAC rumored to be merging with Lucid Motors. Lucid Motors is an American EV company and a competitor to Tesla. Stockmo thinks this merger will happen very soon. Stockmo increased his merger confirmation price target to between $55 and $60. That would represent a 50% upside from Friday's closing price. ZipTrader let us know about some news that came out Friday that said Michael Klein, the founder of CCIV, was focused on raising cash for his other SPACs. That led people to believe that the Lucid talks are nearly complete. ZipTrader also let us know about a rumor that an early investor in Lucid is in talks to sell their shares to CCIV. That could be a good thing, but it could also delay talks as the proper valuation is determined. ZipTrader also let us know that he has a merger confirmation price target on CCIV of between $70 to $80. ZipTrader said that if he does hit that price target range, you should consider selling because SPACs typically pop on merger confirmation news and then sell off. Finally, Ken and Grace let us know that 30 large institutions bought CCIV on Friday, with 23 of them buying CCIV for the very first time. That is a huge number of institutional investors buying CCIV on nothing more than a rumor. So that's another sign that these large institutions believe a merger is imminent. Next up is CMLF. This is a SPAC and they're merging with SEMA4, which is a genomics company. SEMA4 is focused on better diagnosis of genetic diseases by combining artificial intelligence with diagnostics. My financial friend let us know that the SPAC just announced who they are merging with on Wednesday and ARK Invest started buying them on Thursday. Between both of those news items, my financial friend feels like CMLF is too high right now and he wants CMLF to come back down before he buys. Next up is CNRG. This is Spider Kenosho Clean Power ETF. Larry Jones listed CNRG as one of four stocks to buy and hold long term to turn $5 a day into a million dollars. Next up is DMTK. This is Dermtech. They're a pharmaceutical company, and my financial friend listed DMTK as one of his top five biotech stocks to buy now. If you want more information on DMTK, please watch my financial friend's earlier video on this stock. 
Next up is DPW. This is Alt Global Holdings. They're a Bitcoin miner amongst other things. Smart Trader thinks DPW could go much higher. Alt Global announced on February 1st that they are resuming Bitcoin mining with 1,000 mining machines, but the stock didn't really move too much on that news. I think the reason is because this is a holding company with a lot of other companies under its belt, and Bitcoin mining is only a small portion of what this company does. So I think Smart Trader is being a little bit too bullish on DPW. That said, we do have good momentum, so I do like DPW for a long-term hold. I'll put a buy under price on DPW at $5.50 and an ideal buy in price at $5. I would also put a stop loss at $4.50. Regarding a price target, I think $10 by the end of the year is reasonable. Next up is FB, Facebook. Ken and Grace continues to like FB and so do I. It has very strong long-term momentum and I think this would make a great long-term hold. Recent analyst price targets at FB range from $320 to $358. Ken and Grace just let us know that Facebook is looking to start selling smartwatches. I'm not sure how well that will work out for them profit-wise, since people have a very negative viewpoint of Facebook's products due to privacy concerns, but I'm sure they will sell a few. Regardless, if we take a look at the weekly chart, it's near the bottom of its trend line, so now is a good time to buy. I will give you a buy under price of $275, an ideal buy in price of $265, and a stop loss price of $240. Also, the average analyst price target of $340 gives FB a 26% upside from Friday's closing price. Next up is FSR. This is Fisker, and they're a car company getting into EVs. ZipTrader let us know that FSR jumped on Friday after Morgan Stanley increased their price target to $27. Morgan Stanley noted that Fisker's partnership with Magna International, a company that provides EV technology and automated driving software, will make it very easy for Fisker to get their EVs to the market. Just keep in mind that while Fisker will continue to manufacture and sell their gas vehicles, they are still a year or longer away from producing their first EV. I don't have any price targets on this yet. I would just put this on your watch list for now. Next up is FTFT. This is Future Fintech, and Chris Sane said this has run up a lot lately, and now is the time to take profits. Next up is FUSE. This is a SPAC, and Richard Allen let us know that they just announced who they are merging with. And no, it's not BlockFi. They are merging with Money Lion. Money Lion is a competitor to SoFi. Like SoFi, they have banking, loans, saving, and investing all in one app. Money Lion is a much newer company than SoFi, though, with SoFi generating about 100 times more revenue than Money Lion right now, so that could be good and bad. On the good side, they have a lot more room to grow. On the downside, they are a little bit late to the market and they're going to have a lot more difficulty getting customers. So I see more risk with FUSE, but I also see more potential, especially since FUSE closed Friday at only $11.59. If you want more information about this merger, please go watch Richard Allen's video that he uploaded Friday. For comparison, SoFi is currently trading under SPAC symbol IPOE. Also, if you want to get $50 for free, sign up for SoFi using my link in the description below and you'll get $50 in free stock when you sign up using my link and deposit $1,000. Next up is GEVO. This is Jevo and their renewable energy company. Ken and Grace first mentioned GEVO when it was trading at around $6 a share. He gave an update yesterday. He likes GEVO at its current price and recommends buying more at around $13.50. Now looking at the chart, if it stays on the short-term trend line, then Ken and Grace is correct that now is the right time to buy. However, if it does what NNDM did and consolidates, then it could drop back down to its longer-term trend line. So although I think GEVO is a good company and definitely has some great long-term catalysts, I do see quite a bit of risk in the short term. For me personally, this is too risky to buy at current prices. So I'm personally going to give a buy under price of $10 and an ideal buy in price of $9. I'm also going to give a $15 price target. Next up is GNUS. This is Genius Brands International. Chris Sane listed this as one of his easy money plays. That means this is a short-term play for him. I know a lot of people got burned by GNUS, but this is one that I've been swing trading quite a bit as well. If you look at the weekly chart, you can see clearly that GNUS has bottomed out and has started to go back up. While I don't think GNUS will get back to $11, it could get back to $3.50. 
So I'm going to give a buy under price of $2, an ideal buy in price of $1.75, and a price target of $3.50. I will also give a stop loss price of $1.25. Next up is HVBTF. This is Hive Blockchain Technologies. They're a Bitcoin and Ethereum miner. Stockmo likes this in addition to MARA. He believes that HVBTF should be able to buy more mining machines and more Bitcoin as their stock price rises and the company grows. Technically, there is strong momentum, which is good. The only problem is that it has gone up too much recently. I would wait for a pullback before buying. I'm going to set a buy under price of $2.50 and an ideal buy in price of $2.30. I don't have a price target. I would just say hold for the long term or until HVBTF drops below its momentum trend line. Next up is HYLN. This is Hylion and they're a commercial EV company. Sip Trader let us know about some news that came out Friday where HYLN said their new battery can be charged in under 8 minutes. That's huge for commercial vehicles because it solves the problem of a long charge time. ZipTrader said that HYLN under $20 is still a good deal. I had a buy under price on HYLN of $18 and an ideal buy in price of $16. I think it will still drop back down below $18 again, so I think you'll have another opportunity to buy HYLN. But your time is running out because it's showing signs of waking up. Keep in mind that HYLN hit a high of $58.66 just a few short months ago, so there is a lot of upside potential with this stock. I will also give you a stop loss price of $15. Next up is INSG. This is in Sego, and they're a 5G company and they make secure wireless routing. Larry Jones listed INSG as one of four stocks to buy and hold long term to turn $5 a day into a million dollars. Next up is LGHL. This is Lion Group Holding. They're a trading platform similar to Weeble but in Hong Kong. Smart Trader let us know that LGHL is now getting into Bitcoin mining which makes it very different from other trading platforms. Now this is a new company so it's still very risky. Smart Trader isn't necessarily recommending buying LGHL, but says to get this on your watch list and keep your position small due to the risk. I'll go ahead and give you a buy under price of $4, an ideal buy in price of $3.75, and a stop loss price of $3.25. I will also go ahead and give you a price target of $5. Next up is MARA. This is Marathon Patent Group. They're a Bitcoin miner. Stockmo mentioned this as one of his penny stocks to buy now, in addition to HVBFT. His reason is because he expects Bitcoin to continue to rise as the US dollar becomes less valuable and more and more merchants accept Bitcoin. Next up is NIO, NEO. This is a Chinese EV manufacturer. Stockmo thinks that as more companies get into the EV, the better it will be for all EV stocks because infrastructure will grow and it will make it easier for people to own electric vehicles. He thinks confirmation of the CCIV merger will be good for NIO because that will be another strong EV player added to the market. Stockmo has a $90 to $100 price target on NIO by the end of this year. I have a buy under price of $60 and an ideal buy in price of $57. I will also let you know that I currently own NIO. I bought it right before my surgery at $55.41. Ken and Grace also let us know that 14 large institutions bought NIO on Friday. Ken and Grace also likes NIO as a long-term hold. Next up is NVCN. This is Neovask. This is one of Chris Sane's easy money plays, which means this is a short-term play for him. We do see a little bull flag here, but it's not a particularly strong bull flag. So I would say that while this will probably go up on Monday, it is risky. If you play this, make sure you put a stop loss at 10% below where you buy it. Chris Sane put a price target on NVCN of $4, but that is at the high end and it might not get quite that high. Next up is PLTR. This is Palantir and they're a data analytics company. Ken and Grace recommends keeping this on your radar because all weekend they are having a Q&A for investors leading up to their earnings this week. Yesterday we talked about an options play in PLTR. Today I want to give you price targets for a long term hold. I'm going to give a buy under price of $33, an ideal buy in price of $31.50 and a stop loss of $30. Ken and Grace gave a price target of $45 which I think is good. Next up is SBE Switchback Energy. This is a SPAC merging with ChargePoint. SPE is dropping after the merger got delayed. Stockmo is thinking about selling and buying back in after the merger, but he's still researching that idea. Again, if you own SPE and you haven't voted yet, call your broker and vote. 
Richard Allen reminded us that this merger was delayed until February 25th because not enough people voted. This merger will not happen if not enough people vote. It's close, but as of right now, only 45% of the shareholders have voted, and this can't merge until 50% of shareholders vote. So if you own SBE and you haven't voted yet, call your broker and vote. Now, looking at the chart technically, this bounced right off the bottom of the consolidation trend line Friday, but it's also running out of room to consolidate, and it's going to break out to the upside or downside soon. I think there's a little better chance it breaks out to the upside. I think it's getting pushed down by the merger getting delayed again, and I think that once enough people vote and the merger is confirmed, SBE will start going back up. So as far as when is the best time to buy, now. I'll put a buy under price of $40 and an ideal buy in price of $38 on SBE. I will also go ahead and give a $45 price target on the conservative end, although $50 is probably more likely. Finally, I'll give a stop loss price of $32. Next up is SENS. This is Sensionics. They're an implantable blood sugar glucose monitoring manufacturer. My financial friend listed SENS as one of his top five biotech stocks to buy now. If you want more information on SCNS, please watch my financial friend's earlier video on this stock. Next up is SOS. This is SOS Limited, and they're a Bitcoin miner. Smart Trader let us know that SOS just announced an offering for $110 million. Now, normally a stock offer would push the price of a stock down, but in this case, the stock skyrocketed, and here's why. They plan to use the money to develop their recently launched cryptocurrency mining, security, and insurance business. They received the first shipment of 5,000 mining computers on February 9th, and SmartTrader compared SOS to other Bitcoin miners like RIOT and MARA and showed how SOS has a lot of room to run up. That said, SmartTrader does recommend buying the dips and not chasing. So I'll put a buy under price on SOS of $6.25 and an ideal buy in price of $5.50. If it hits $4.50, I would load up. I would also put a stop loss on SOS at $4. Smart Trader put a two week price target on SOS of $10. Next up is TLRY. This is Tilray and they're an MMJ stock. After yesterday's video, my wife asked for a stop loss price, so I looked at the chart and came up with $24. Now, Ken and Grace gave an update Friday after close and said he bought TLRY on Friday. So I have two thoughts on this. On one hand, TLRY still has about 15% more to drop before it hits the trend line. On the other hand, the candle on Friday was in inverted hammer, which is a reversal sign, and could mean that TLRY has bottomed out and is about to go back up. So if you buy Monday, I think that's fine. Just be prepared to hold if the stock drops 15%. If you look at this as a long-term hold, then I'll give a buy under price of $30 with an ideal buy-in price of $27. I don't have a price target though, since this is too volatile right now. So if you decide to buy TLRY, I would just hold long-term. Next up is TRCH. This is Torchlight Energy Resources. Chris Sane listed this as one of his easy money plays. This means this is a short term play for him. He recommends buying Monday, but also said to get out if it drops more than five to 10% below where you bought it at. So if you buy TRCH, make sure to enter a stop loss at 10% below where you bought it at. Now I'm going to let you know that I do not like this play. I do not like buying stocks after they have already run up massively. I like to buy low and sell high. I'm looking for the stocks that have not yet run up, but have the great potential to do so. So for me, I will be staying away from TRCH. Next up is TSLA, Tesla. This is an American EV manufacturer. Taking a look at the chart, we can see TSLA trading mostly flat for the past month. And that's not surprising. TSLA has a history of trading flat for one to three months before another catalyst comes along and pushes the stock price up again. You can see that clearly on the weekly chart, where it traded flat between July and August of last year before going up, and then it traded flat between September and November, and then shot up again. Now we're seeing it trade flat again. So I do expect TSLA to trade flat for a little while longer before going back up. That said, when it trades flat, it usually has a level of support, and you can see that on the daily chart. The support level is around $780, so I'm going to put a buy under price on TSLA of $820 and an ideal buy in price of $800. 
All of that said, Stockmo is concerned about the fact that Elon Musk's brother just sold $25 million worth of TSLA. Personally, I'm not that concerned about it because Elon's brother isn't personally invested in the company. And he may just be taking profits because he's getting cold feet since TSLA has been trading flat for the past month. Next up is TTCF. This is Tattooed Chef and they're a plant-based foods company and a competitor to Beyond Meat. Chris Haynes said TTCF is in a buy zone right now. The thing is, TTCF has been really flat over the past few months. You really have to look at the weekly chart to understand what's going on with TTCF. You can see that this stock is very volatile and it had a huge run up back in December and now it's trading flat for the past two months. I really don't like this chart from a technical standpoint. I think it's just as likely that TTCF might fall back down to its long-term trend line to around $18, as it might also trade flat for the next six months until the long-term trend line catches up to the current price. Either way, I see TTCF trading flat or going down, but I do not see it going up. And let's not forget the descending triangle, which is also bearish. Altogether, I have to disagree with Chris Sane on this one and recommend selling TTCF. If you really want to play TTCF, I would consider a credit call spread. Next up is TTOO. This is T2 Biosystems. They're a genomics company similar to BNGO. My financial friend listed TTOO as one of his top five biotech stocks to buy now. If you want more information on TTOO, please watch my financial friend's earlier video on the stock. I will also let you know that TTOO is one of my largest holdings and I am up 55% on it already. Next up is TYME. This is Time and they're a pharmaceutical company. My financial friend listed TYME as one of his top five biotech stocks to buy now. If you want more information on TYME, please watch my financial friend's earlier video on this stock. Next up is ZOM. This is Zomedica and they're a pharmaceutical company. Ken and Grace likes this as a short-term play based upon the assumption that hype will increase as more and more media outlets start talking about this company. That may or may not work out. The chart is still short-term bullish though, but I do see consolidation starting to happen right now. So you might make 20% or so as a short-term play, but this is very uncertain. That said, you can see that ZOM moves 10% or more at each day intraday. So this would make a great day trading stock. All right, just a reminder that Monday, the markets in the United States are closed. They will reopen on Tuesday. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a lot out of it. Comment down below what your favorite stock pick is. And if you want to get some free stocks, sign up for Webull or SoFi using my link in the description below. That will help you out and it also helps me out and helps provide money so that I can go ahead and create this channel. Finally, remember to hit the like button and subscribe and click the bell icon if you haven't already. I hope you have a lot of success trading and I will see you tomorrow.